Hey, this is John Petrucci, and this month I'd like to talk about combining simple triad arpeggios in order to imply more complex chord forms. And this is a really cool improvisational tool because you can use it whether you're playing over a static environment or whether you're, you're actually playing over chord changes that you want to follow. Okay, so we're going to start very simple, so the concept is outlined really clearly. First example uses a G major triad arpeggio, and it's going to be between the E, B, and G strings. So the root's going to be here on G, and the triad should look pretty familiar. It goes like this. So over a G note, it would sound like this. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to combine that with an E minor arpeggio, very, very simple form. Again, should look really familiar. The root is going to be on E on the G string, and that's going to look like this. So played over an E. It sounds like that. Now the real magic comes in combining the two, and there's going to be two chordal sounds that are going to be created by combining them. The first one will be based on G. So if we take the G major and we combine it with the E minor, we have this type of shape combined. Right, so over a G major chord, it implies a G6 form. And that's primarily because we're adding in the E. If we play that same shape over an E, it's going to imply an E minor 7. And that's primarily because we're adding in the flat 7. And the minor 3rd is already there. All right, so already you can see that just by combining two simple triad arpeggios, we're implying chords that are a little more rich in their voicings. Let's apply that same thing to two more chords. We'll take A minor 7 and C6. All right, so the A minor 7 sound is going to come from combining a C major triad. and an A minor triad. All right, so over a C, we have a C6 sound. Don't play that note. <laughs> and uh, over an A minor 7, sounds like this. I can't help it. I guess why I, I, I tend to go there is because if you're actually using this in um, a soloing phrase, you'd probably be bending to notes and playing melodies, which is just kind of a natural thing to do. So you can use these arpeggios as kind of stepping off points to create phrases and, and licks. So that's the basic concept as far as sixth sounds that are major and seventh sounds that are minor. Let's take that a step further and get into some ninth chords and into some 13th chords. And the way that we're going to do that is really exactly the same as far as the concept and the technique, but it's just a matter of which arpeggios that we pick out to combine to add in the extra notes. Okay, so the very first one we're going to do is going to, again, start in G. So it's going to start with the G major triad. And we're going to move up, we're going to skip over the next diatonic arpeggio in E minor, which would be A minor. And we're going to go to B minor. So just uh, as an aside, by the way, all of these 
arpeggios and chords and everything are diatonic to the key of E minor or G major for this example. So we're going to combine G major and B minor. Now, when I play that already, in my ear, I hear a G major 7 happening. So let's hear what that sounds like over G. Once again, I added an extra melody note that's not in there, but don't worry, we're getting to that now. If we take that same shape and apply it over an E minor 7, it's going to sound like this. Now, because we're adding in an F sharp, it's actually a ninth, so we have the flat 7 of E minor, and we have the ninth being F sharp. So now, actually, we have an E minor ninth sound. So already, we're getting more advanced. We started out with just basic triads, E minor, G major, then we went to a G major 6, and an E minor 7, now we're going to a G major 7, and an E minor 9, and we really didn't change too much, all we're doing is kind of combining arpeggio shapes. So again, over the G. Over the E. That's kind of cool, um, that F sharp on top, just as a note. Kind of a cool melodic device that you know is going to resolve up a half step. In this case, over E, it's going to be the minor third, so it's a kind of powerful note. You can also add in the F sharp down there if you want. So let's just add one more thing here to further complicate matters. <laughs> All right, so the final thing is to create a bigger chord sound. This is going to be a G major 13. All right, in order to do that, the concept remains simple. We're going to combine three arpeggios this time. So we have the G major, we have the B minor, and now we have the E minor. So when you put those all together, we have something that sounds like this. And the cool thing is that it's implying the sound over the G. You have the 13, you have the major 7, it has a major sound.